Hi, welcome to the Pursuit of Truth. So I was watching this on Sky News um, about the Uyghur population in China. Obviously, um, I've never been to China, so I can't verify this story. And we do know that the West um, does like to vilify um, China, Iran, uh, Middle East countries, Russia, etc. I suspect all people are very similar no matter what... Um, regime they belong to, whether that's UK, US, Russia, China, whatever, humans are humans, and we're all programmed by the place that we found ourselves upon, based on the laws and cultures and systems that are of that time. Um, but it was interesting because you think about, you know, when we, when I say on here and complain about the things that are happening, you know, if this, if this is really how it is in China, um, how bad it is, well, it's just another indictment against humanity. Um, it doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter what the name is attached to it. You know, all countries are um, not treating humanity in the way it should be treated, in helping each other and loving each other and finding a way we can experience life all together in the best possible way. I sound like Kenny Everett, then, doesn't it? All in the best possible taste. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> So yeah, interested in me this this story and how bad it must be for the the Uyghur Muslims who are being persecuted and um, the talk of uh, this uh, was it like uh, courses they have to take to well I assume to change them I don't know what they uh, funny they didn't really delve into that I would have liked to have known exactly what it's about it reminded me of that um, back in American history I can't remember what, um, it was one of uh, Netflix program. But, the little girl with the the orange hair, Annie, was it? Anne of, wasn't Anna Green Gables, was it? It was Anne something. Um, when her friend was uh, a native, what you call Native American, uh, I can't remember the actual tribe name, and she was taken to the school and she thought, oh yeah, I'm getting an education, and really they were beating out her you know, her Native American and trying to make her Christian and trying to make her American and changing her name and all that kind of stuff. And it, that's what came to my mind when talking about these correctional courses. Corrections for what? And just how difficult it must be to live. Well, well it's difficult in any country to live um, if you want to be truly free and if you want to be able to... Well, we're all stuck... Uh, or slaves to the systems that we find ourselves upon, whatever country. So yeah, I thought it was uh, interesting to hear this, another indictment against humanity and the systems that we all choose to to keep. 45. Now, in recent years, China's most northwestern province has been mostly closed to the outside world. It has left the latest phase of a campaign of oppression against the native Uyghur minority largely unchecked and unreported. But now, for the first time since COVID restrictions were dropped, Sky News has been inside the region. Our Asia correspondent, Helen Ann Smith, visited 22 sites around the Xinjiang province, including several in Hotan, and filed this report from across the region. On the streets of Xinjiang, there is still a tension and signs of what this place has been through. Heavy police, regular stops, a sense they're always watching. It is now infamous for its brutal oppression of the Muslim Uyghur minority, and there are questions as to how far that policy is ongoing. It is the camps that characterize the crackdown, places like this. Experts and survivors say it once held Uyghurs, arrested en masse and subject to so-called re-education, but we found it dusty, deserted. It's really an incredible eeriness to this place. I and mean, it just is completely abandoned. Signs of what used to be are everywhere though. Around the front, one building cordoned off from the rest appeared to be acting as temporary housing. And some of the buildings over there, are they, are they empty? I don't know, this man says. There were people here when I first arrived. That ominous looking camp was built 
where we had beautiful dreams as children. It's unbearable, it's unthinkable. This place is haunting for Memetian. He knows his brother Emetian was held here. It might be closed, but his brother is not free. After two years here without charge, a police officer told him what happened next. According to the police officer, he said that my brother had a sensitive book which was banned by the government. Uh, impromptu kind of court was held, court hearing was held in the camp and he was sentenced to 14 years. China says everyone held for re-education has now graduated. Over 90% of the re-education camps we visited were visibly no longer being used for this purpose. Most now appear to be schools. The reality may be far more complex. In fact, while arrests spiked in 2017 at the height of the crackdown, they remain higher than they were before it started. Prosecutions jumped up too, and there was a huge increase in average sentences, meaning most of those people will still be locked up. But if not in the camps, then where? What we're now doing is taking a trip further outside the city centre, because what we've heard is that the camps that are further out are more likely to be still used for that purpose, and that's also where some of the larger prisons are that we think, in some cases, might have been expanded. Some, it seems, they did not want us to see. We found all the roads to one large cluster of facilities were blocked. Those we did reach were fearsome. Eight in total, all clearly operational. And satellites show some have recently expanded. In 2018, towards the end of the crackdown, this site hadn't even been started. Watchtowers added just recently. And here too, a prison right next to a re-education camp extended, while the camp part had its walls and watchtowers removed. The initial wave of arrests might have passed, but the fear they've wrought has not. This woman is one of the very rare few to have escaped within the last two years. Even from a place of safety, she is visibly terrified. It's all lies. Most people are still inside. Although it looks as if everything's normal, people who were deemed a bit problematic are taken always, and no one knows where they've been taken to. They don't say anything about what happened to them when they were inside, but it's obvious that they've experienced extreme horror. In response to our story, China's foreign ministry said allegations of the camps are sheer lies and that vocational schools helped people break away from terrorist and extremist ideas. Everyone has now graduated. The message is that everything is normal here now. The crackdown may be less visible. For many, it still feels very real. Helen Ann Smith, Sky News in Xinjiang. It's interesting, isn't it? It's difficult to to think of, you know, is it really like that? I mean, the problem is, is because we know, you know, if you take it from your programming as a Westerner, you're just going to believe it. But we all know how the West drip feeds, I suppose the word is hate. Oh, I've got to be careful because of Facebook and YouTube's policy on how you say these things. But what, what I mean is, is that in Western countries, if you ask most Westerners what their opinions are of Russia and Middle East and China, it's going to have a, they're going to give mostly a negative answer. Where do they get that from? Why do they have that feeling or that sentiment? Where well, they never even, you know, touch the soil of those lands. Where do they get it from? Well, obviously movies and TV and media. So of course you can be, you can create an image, and it, it sort of reminds me a bit of 1984 the way they're describing China. Well, of course, we know 1984 was uh, based on Russia. Uh, and I don't know if it was based on Britain and America as well. Um, but yeah, it just reminded me hearing that. And the fact that someone who had a sensitive book could get 14 years for it, reminding of like Fahrenheit 451 or even Orwell's 1981, uh, Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451 or... George Orwell's 1984, just an oh, animal farm. That's what it felt like. Sorry, this was animal farm I was talking about before, wasn't it? How, how it felt. Could it really be a place, you know, a dystopia in, in Western fiction? Could it really be a place that exists in the 21st century? Could it really be like that? I mean, imagine if it was like that and I was making these pursuits of truth. <laughs> I'd be in prison by now. 
It's a scary thought, really, isn't it? Sometimes we complain about the place that we find ourselves upon, but there, we actually do have a lot of freedoms, but just not enough. That doesn't mean we should stop, but we need more. Everyone needs more. Humanity needs freedom from itself, from the systems, the man-made constructs of thousands of years ago that we're still tying ourselves to. But yeah, I just thought it was an interesting thing. It was not interesting for the Uyghur Muslims who are going through this or anyone who's going through, you know, being well, re-educated was how they put it. Sounds so terrible, doesn't it? And this, this is, you know, these are the things that we look back in history and we see these things, but still humanity, you know, it doesn't matter whether you put a label on it like China or whatever. At the end of the day, you strip away all these titles, all these boxes and, you know, that we put ourselves in. What are we all? We're all only human beings. And this is how we're treating each other. Why? Because we can, because we've been taught we can through the system of not loving one another, not seeing each other as brothers and sisters of each other, not seeing each other as human beings because we put other titles on them that then allow you to treat people differently, like, you know, a class system in India or, you know, like, you know, you've got a Uyghur Muslim and then suddenly you can treat them like that. Or in the past, you know, the labels of, you know, in the, in the, the windows in the 50s, in most Western countries, the, you know, was it no blacks, no Irish, no gypsies? Until we change ourselves, these things aren't going to change because they're still going on, aren't they? Human beings are still treating each other badly. And it will only stop when we recognise that, well, the truth is that we're all human beings and we need to have a system that, uh, uh, you know, puts that at the core not money, not competition, not capitalism, not any power or greed or possession, humanity. Take care, take it easy, God bless and peace.